Let's fix your access problem once and for all. During this entire pandemic, the number one challenge that medical sales professionals have identified and shared with me and others, maybe with you, has been access. Access to doctors, access to surgeons and their accounts and stakeholders in their accounts. That's been the number one problem. Well, I'm here today to share with you the cause of that problem and how to fix it. Okay, are you ready? Here's the cause. I don't care what you've heard. This is the number one cause of the access problem. It's sales representatives. I'm not trying to imply it's you because I don't know you, but I'm just saying it, it could be you. It might be. And here's how you could tell if it's you or not. Listen up. It has to do with your approach and the reason why you're approaching the account. Now, again, if you do what I'm about to describe, then the problem is probably you. If you approach by saying something along the lines with, yeah, I wonder if Dr. Smith is available. We have a new widget and I'd like to take a few minutes and show it to him. In other words, if you approach by talking about wanting to show a product or your service or to help them with your product or service, because of course everybody wants help, then the challenge or the problem with access is you. So how do you fix it? That's really what you want to know. How do you fix it? Don't talk about the product. And you don't have to talk about the product. In fact, why talk about the product? Because generally you have a limited number of products. If you look in your catalog or in your bag, as we like to say, there's just a few products. But you know something? If you look at the challenges, the problems, the issues, the mandates, the goals, the needs that your customers have, they are limitless. Why aren't you talking about that? And don't just look at clinical challenge challenges, look at all the challenges. There's a lot of them out there. The biggest challenge that I had when I started in medical sales was I was the new guy. Maybe you're the new guy. Or maybe you just have those accounts that even though you're not the new guy, they don't let you in because we're very happy with our current supplier. If you'd like to leave some information and your business card, we'll take a look and we'll call you if we're interested. You probably never hear that because nobody ever says that, right? Except for like everybody. So when I was new, I was up against competitors who've been in the territory literally for 10 or 20 years or more. They were in solid with my accounts. And guess what? If I approached to talk about my product, They'd say, well, thanks for coming by, but you know, Dr. Smith has been using XYZ company for over 20 years. That was a nice way of saying, dude, you're wasting your time. So I learned kind of quickly not to talk about my product. And I still struggled, but something happened. I realized that doctors and other healthcare professionals are willing to talk about things where there's something in it for them, something they want. Now, I used to go to the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgery. I'm sure some of you do. And because I was a former PhD candidate in anatomy at the University of Florida College of Medicine, I spent a lot of my time, whether I liked it or not, having to read scientific papers. And I learned how to dissect the scientific paper to summarize it. And a lot of the doctors in my territory, when I queried them, weren't able to go. They'd say things like, yeah, I really want to go, but you know, I got to stay and cover the practice. Wish I could go. There's going to be some great sessions this year on uh, hip arthroplasty or total knee replacement or UD compartment, whatever the particular subject was. So I realized that this was something they wanted. And I asked myself, how can I deliver some level of value relative to this desirable information they'd like to have for them? So what I did when I would go to the academy, and since I would pay my way there, I wasn't stuck on the exhibit floor, I would attend as many scientific uh, exhibits and scientific sessions as were open to people where you didn't need to have a certain level of registration. I snuck into a few others, and then I would talk to some of the surgeons that I knew about what sessions they attended. And if they had copies of papers, scientific papers that were given out at the sessions, 
I would get those papers and photocopy them. I got home, I wrote up a summary of all these papers in different categories, hip arthroplasty, knee arthroplasty. And then what I did was I targeted the offices that would never let me in. I, I even had some surgeons who hated my company because the prior reps had screwed them over in one way or another. So I, I targeted all of these. And when the receptionist said, well, if you'd like to leave some information, I said, no, no, no. I'm not, I'm not calling to sell them anything. I recently attended the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgery and I have a nice summary of the major sessions on subjects that the doctor would be interested in. If he'll schedule 10 minutes with me, I'd like to go over it with him and I will leave him a written summary of what we're going to discuss. It will be worth his time. He wants to have this information. There were probably 15 or 20 offices that I was never able to get into or rarely. Out of these 15 or 20 offices, do you know how many I was able to get into? All of them. Why? Because I wasn't taking a product-focused approach. I was talking about something that they cared about. And here's something else that was very interesting. Now, I, of course, because I'm a sales professional, I had to try to get a little bit more out of it. I delivered value. I wanted something in exchange. I wanted them to consider my products, if not at this meeting, then in the future. Now, they were certainly not willing to consider my bigger products like hips and knees. But you know what? The commodity products, and listen closely for those of you who sell a product that some of your customers may have alluded to and pointed a finger and said, you know, this is really a commodity if you could give it to us for a lower price. I'm talking about those items. Because one of the challenges that a lot of reps always bring up to me is they'll say, Mace, I sell a commodity. How do you distinguish a commodity? Well, you know what? Sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can't distinguish a commodity, but there is always something else that you can distinguish. You distinguish yourself. I was able to distinguish myself by coming in and talking about a subject, providing value that none of my competitors were providing. Probably they weren't able to provide. Here's the point to you. There are valuable things you can share with your accounts and customers. Might be on the fringes of the products or services that you provide, but it's about distinguishing you. Because what these surgeons did for me, they didn't offer me again, their big cases, their hips and knees, but the commodity products, which at the time were casting material, orthopedic soft goods, and simple trauma implants, such as uh, plates and uh, hip fixation devices they would give me a crack at that business. Not because my products were any different, they weren't. In fact, they were pretty much identical to what they were using. But I distinguished myself. I provided them with value. And many of them wanted to pay it back. And that's how I got my foot in the door. So right now, your problem is access. It's because you're approaching by talking about something that your accounts don't care about. Stop talking about it. Think about what you know. Think about what you can do, what you can deliver, what you can talk about, what you're passionate about. And then find a way of connecting it to your product or service. If you don't know how to do that, there are people who could help you. Talk to your sales manager. Talk to your fellow sales representatives. Talk to me but the opportunities are out there, I assure you. But if your challenge is access, the best way to fix that is to change your approach. And the best way to change your approach is to do it in a way that distinguishes you as being someone who provides value at a different level than your competitors. Your sales call is not about you. It's never about you. When you go in to say, I want to talk to you about a product, that's making it about you. Your sales call is about the healthcare professional. It's about the healthcare institution, the hospital. And ultimately, it's about the patient. The patient always comes first. That's why you do what you do. If you're not focusing on the patient, get the hell out. You're of no use in this industry. This is a patient-focused industry. But also, if you're not getting access, it's probably because of you. Get out there and make a difference.